Hello, rocket science fans. I'm Mr. Michael, and welcome back. Today, I'm talking about the new Spike Prime Essential, uh, the miniature set, and we'll go through different details on the programming. I've already done an unboxing and an intro to the box, so if you haven't seen that, please watch those video, and you can uh, get caught up on what we are talking about today. But we are going to go into the coding, and let me do that now. If you have not already set up your coding for the Spike Prime Essential, if you already have Spike Prime, you can just up, update it, and it'll set up your Spike Prime Essentials as well. So this is a screen you'll see. You can go to the Spike Prime, or you can go to Spike Prime Essential. <laughs> I know. Pretty cool characters jumping out at you there. So you go ahead and click on the Spike Prime Essential. And let's go to Home first. Home is going to give you this great screen here. It's going to say Spike Prime Essential. It gives you a good start. Uh, how to break down each of the programming points. Let's go ahead and sneak in here and see. It's going to show you how to program your small motor, your light or matrix screen, your color sensor, your built in. Gyro sensor and your word blocks as well. So back to the home screen, we have our coding. And I'm gonna show you, and below that you have your unit plans here and your building instructions for all your building instructions there. And on the side you have home, or you can click it on the other screens. You have your start here and here, your units, which are at the bottom part and your building and all of your projects here where you can edit those at any time, uh, delete them or rename them as well. So let's go into a new project and it's gonna ask us, do you want the icon block, which resembles the We Do and the We Do 2 and a lot of the other icon drop and play blocks, or you can use the word blocks, which is over here and that will uh, pull up your scratch. It does not show Python for the uh, essentials, but the prime does have the uh, backup, which is the icon block, the word block, and Python. So let's go and go to the, to the icon block so you can see and be interested at. Click, click your create. And if you go here, it's going to give you a start blocks. And as you have your new codes up, it's going to give you in this section all of your instructions and a limited amount of your code blocks here. But I went ahead and opened, actually, I'm going to go ahead and open up the rest. Well, I'll open up the rest later. This is your start palette here, which we already have. And once you have that there, uh, let's go ahead and connect our brick. So I have my brick. Go ahead and show it over here. Here's your brick. And I'm going to power it up. Hitting the button. It's going to go Bluetooth. And on my Bluetooth, it's going to ask me your hub. I'm going to go ahead and click and agree to connect this hub. I just updated it, so I got rid of my name. And once I update, it's going to give me a great. I think I turned off before I could connect. Let's try that again. Um, here we go. And we are connected. It shows all of my Bluetooth parts here. Here it shows how much power I have and it says give your hub a unique name. So I'll name it Mr. Michael. That's pretty unique. And I'll put an M behind it for the, I'll put an E behind it for essential. All right, done. And it will show you your hub is connected here. And on your port, it will show that it is connected on the brick as well. So I'll go ahead and turn that screen off. And well, I'll put the screen on so we can see it. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. That screen is on. I will I'll pin this screen here so we can see it as well. Okay, so that is on and let's do a first coding. Well, let's talk about our code blocks here. Our code blocks are going to show 
our color sensor. All the things we can do is click here and it shows a drop down all the colors it can recognize. Your gyro sensor in a sense uh, where it's tilted. We want it to go to this direction. You can click here for that direction or when it's tilted forward, it can react. You even have it where you can lay it uh, flat. When it's laid flat, you can have it react. And then you can go here, which is a shaking. So if it's shaken back and forth, you can have it react that way as well. And again, you just drag those up to the top or clear them at the bottom part. This is your voice, uh, how, how loud your voice would be. And there'll be a voice recognition from your computer or tablet. So from your computer or tablet, that will show up on your, on your uh, system from that. So if you're taking your, your spike essential to the floor and you're looking for the sound sensor to work, that is not going to work from that uh, from that hub. It will need to have the tablet or the computer next to it to recognize that sound. So please make a note of that. This is your you're sending a message, receiving a message, and you click on that. You can send a color message, or receive a color message, or a random message. And this is your speed, how fast you're going. And it, I like this as you click on those different uh, speeds, they'll speed up and slow down. Is how many rotations you're doing and so forth. So, so this is a lot of uh, coding blocks. And then this is how you can get to those faster. There's your blue, there's your uh, lighter purple there for your color matrix. And this is where I was speaking of earlier. These are all the different colors and you saw that light up on my screen over here on my uh, block. All the different colors you can add into that. And each one of those you can select uh, as you need to, and it's really, really fantastic on how you can uh, set that up. Here's your sounds, your animal sounds, or your sounds, and then your uh, effects, and then your music, and you can also record your voice, and again, that comes out of the computer. Your wait for, your loops, your counted loops, and your regular loops, and then the end. Then you have an expanded area here, which you can do display. Love it. Uh, bar graphs, which is great because it works well with the gyro sensor and extended science and movement. You click all of those or any one you would like, and those are going to show up here at the end of your palette area. And your, your displays are all here. You select one of those and it'll pop up on or off whenever you need it. Uh, your words will uh, set up here. You just type in whatever you need. And your bar graphs will show up here. It's a display and a bar graph over here as well. And these are added different bar graphs and colors. And this is different speeds and steering that you would use as well. So there's a lot going on on this, uh, on this just the word blocks. And again, you can use the other sensors in here in the uh, word blocks and not the icon blocks. Let's look at our sensor. On the left side here, you can see I have an A motor plugged in and the matrix, and I can extend or expand those and the screen here as well. And this is one of the fun parts here. If you make a mistake, you can always go back and undo erasing something or adding something. And we can click here and see what's going on with our hub. We know our hub is updated. Here's a new update. This is our battery power. You can rename it here. This is our yaw, pitch, and roll, which are, which are gyro sensors. I'll move my hub around a little bit so you can see that actively and what my motor and a light matrix are doing. I'll actually move my motor around. I have it zeroed out and it shows that my hub is on. To do my tilt angle, I click here, orientation, gyro essential, and acceler acceleration, which is how fast this is moving or how fast it is turning. If you need to disconnect that hub, you can. Uh, for many reasons, you can disconnect it uh, because you want to turn it off and save batteries while you're doing a large build or you may have just accidentally connected to someone else's hub. So those are uh, different reasons there. I do wanna peek into a few lessons and a project is here. You can rename that or save it as or move it to different areas. That's something we can get into a little later on. Home screen is here. Uh, you have your units. Let's make the motor move. So we're gonna go to start uh, the motor and we we'll click on that lesson. It says learn, and you can click here. So it'll speak to you. Uh, since it's a six plus, this will help you out, learn how to make the motor turn. And once you want to do that, you can go over here and click your forward. Oops, sorry, too many forwards. 
Uh, click your forward tells you to plug your motor into the A, which we already have. And then you would move forward. Once you move forward, it says, let's go ahead and click this and slide my start up here. This is allowing me to learn how to slide and successfully connect my code blocks. Once I have it there, the hand is going to show. It says, test the program to start the motor. So um, since I have those here, I'm going to go ahead and download and run. And you can see that that is running on my screen here. And once that is running, it told me I needed, I was turning two uh, rotations. So the motor is turning, check. Yes, I did do that. And that part is done. So I have that part done. And now let's do the light sensor. Light sensor says, let's turn, uh, learn how to turn on the light. So we have that there. We do not have it plugged into A. Let's see if it'll override into the port that we have it in. I'm curious, can I bypass that to get the uh, light to turn on? So it says go there. Ah, it did, it auto recognize the light and plugged into the B uh, side and it is on. So that was successful. Ah, changing the light pattern. So we're gonna change the light, the top two. Click that. Oops, I didn't select the color first. Select the color here, here, and here. I believe I'm successful. I like it, and I'm going to run it. And yes, I have that success. Not sure if it'll auto correct me when if I didn't get it right. So press the play button, which I kind of did a little earlier. I'll go back and see if I did that incorrectly. Would it give me a a chance to? It will let me get it incorrectly. And the color sensor, I won't go through all of those, but you can build and talk about how to work the color sensor as well. And if I need to escape out of that because the day is done, I would just escape out or I can go to my units here and choose some adventures, go into those, I have a great part there. It'll tell me how to get started. I have teacher resources here and I would just go through, watch the video and see what's happening, fast forward through that and read the story and interact as a teacher or as a class or individually uh, for homeschooling as well. And it'll show you how to get the instructions going. There's a picture and you can do some pseudo building if you need to. And there are your instructions and you just go through step-by-step step through all of those. Everything's already lined up and when you're done, It'll show you how to code it and to move it. So all of those codes are still at the top here. I can erase them or I can go to them at any time to pull from any of those instructions. And there we are. That's a pretty good lineup. Here's the building area here, all of your instructions. For all of those, it tells you how many steps are on each. And your projects again are here. You can select, duplicate, rename, or delete. And that's it. If you guys have any more questions or any additional questions on the models or on the coding, please leave a comment and put a request in the code area, in the comment area, asking pretty specifically what you're looking to do on the models or the coding or how those parts work. Ah, I do want to get into, show you how the word block would look for the Spike Prime Essential. And we just click right over. This is the scratch that uses the spike prime and it shows that motor here and no limitations are there. All of the codes will work uh, the same. The light matrix is there. Uh, your sounds are there and expanded. All of your, your controls are expanded even more. Your sensors are expanded to reach for the whatever the central needs that operator parts. And then you also have additional blocks, which are for the weather and other barcodes that have been expanded as well. So those are all available for the uh, small but very powerful uh, Spike Prime Essential. So anyway, uh, look forward to your comments. I look forward to expanding on this set and building some models and comparing it to the uh, Spike Prime as well. Here's the motor on the, here's the, here's the brick on the Spike Prime. I'll show you how large that is. And here are the other motors that will run on that model also. So 
and the uh, color sensor, I mean, the ultrasonic sensor, I'm just kind of loading everything into the screen there, and the uh, motion sensor as well. So all of those will run. Again, it only has two ports, but you can get those to run as well on the Spike Prime Essential. Well, until next time, thank you all for joining, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.